again, and I don't want to stress this too much, but are, are you a member of, of a lodge? Is that sensitive to ask you? Uh, at the moment, I'm not. No. You're not? Okay, sure. No. Yeah. But I, I have had a lot to do with them in the past. You have? Okay. I'm, I'm asking it, because, you know, m- many see Freemasonry as, as sinister, but, but uh, the reason I'm asking mainly is because I want to ask if, if you've been in contact with lodges, uh, if you actually have gained a lot of your information from there, you know. Yes, yes, I have that. That is, that is true, yeah. That is true. Um, I, I will say that most um, most solicitors, most policemen, most most men, in order to progress in the security and intelligence organizations, they do they do belong to Masonic lodges. A lot of these guys, they, they, they see them as purely sort of charitable sort of things there, and some of these guys are, are real genuine guys. Mm-hmm. But there is a certain amount of evidence to say that there is manipulation from, from up above on the direction that these lodges take. Yeah. Um, and and, and I, I, can, I can tell you from both extremes, Hendrik, I can tell you of, of cases whereby um, they have done a lot of good and I can also tell you of cases whereby there's been a certain amount of harm done. Sure. Now, there was a guy a few years ago, um, I'm trying to remember his name, he wrote a, a book on, it was an exposure on Freemasonry um, called The Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I think his name was Richard Knight. Uh, yeah. Now, um, I, I knew a guy who knew this fellow. And I said, I really enjoyed this book. I said, would you take the book and get him to autograph it for me? Mm. So he said, yeah. He said, okay. He said, my daughter swims with his daughter. He said, I'll put it in the car. So a few weeks later, he said to me, he said, I haven't seen him. He said, do you want the book back? And I said, no. I said, leave it. I said, I was very impressed. I said, I must have his signature on the book. Well, I put on breakfast TV one morning, and they, they, they had two guests on there. There was Doris Stokes, the medium, and they also had this Richard Knight on there that wrote this very scholarly book, which was an exposure mm-hmm. of Freemasonry. Mm-hmm. And she, the medium said to him, she said, they'll kill you for this this book, you know. She said, and I thought, oh, I had daft, you know. I thought she shouldn't have said that mm-hmm. on breakfast TV. Mm-hmm. But when I, saw my, uh, when I saw my friend, and I said to him, did you get that book autographed for me? He said, haven't you heard? He said, he died. He said, he died of a heart attack. Really? I said, what? He said he's 39 years old. Hmm. And I, I immediately remembered this, and I thought, well, that was very strange. But that's <laughs> one side of Freemasonry. In answer to that, some of the Freemasons wrote a book um, answering that, and I can't remember what it was called, but that gave the other side, and that was an equally scholarly book. Mm-hmm. And I think you have to read both to get a balance. Mm-hmm. Say, I, I, you know, I can give you instances, something as big as the Freemasons, you're going to get quite a spectrum um, of knowledge there. And I could tell you things there that, that I wasn't happy with, but I could also tell you things there that were very patriotic. Um, and one particular hospice there used to get a lot of money um, from their fundraising evenings. And I mean, full credit to them for that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, I mean, but at, at the very highest levels, mm. um, exactly as he said in the book, um, in the Brotherhood book there, he said that there's a certain amount of demonics there, he said a certain amount of stuff that's sort of unpalatable there. Hmm. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and, and the, the, the weird kind of thing with, with it all, to one degree, it's the level that, uh, I mean, Masonry has, has been considered to kind of... Uh, be rebellic in in some uh, or rebellious in some circles. It it has been you know um, said to be kind of the spearhead of the democratic process and and things like this. And yet on within many lodges and w- within many orders, uh, uh, many royal people are are kind of the, uh, the the protectors of the orders and and things like this. And and to me there's kind of a, a uh, you know, an oxymoron in that kind of whole thinking. <laughs> Have you been ordered to kind of root that out, or you know? I, I agree. I think that um, on the whole, um, it is anti-democratic and it is an anti-people organisation because they will only help primarily other Masons. Mm. Are you with me? Yeah. It is primarily there to help other Masons. Sure. And I mean, I can tell you the story of um, um, a chap I knew very well, a senior Mason, lovely old guy, um, and he died. And um, the, quite a few of the Masons would pop round and they'd see his widow and they'd say, if you need any money, if you need anything. And she said to me, they had been wonderful with her. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. But the, the criticism made against Masons is that they will do a lot of this charitable work and they will they'll help people, but it's always other Masons. I sure. think that that is largely the case, but I do know of cases whereby they've helped people who weren't. 
basins, you know. Mm. As I say, I could give you sort of instances on, on both on both ends of the, uh, the uh, uh, strata. Sure. But I know that the KGB, the KGB during the Cold War, they claimed that they had the names of every Freemason in Britain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they, we all had little lists. If the Russians came, if they attacked Britain, then we all, we were all in little groups of five, and we'd all have to go underground, and we'd be given a list of Soviet sympathisers, communists and fellow travellers, um, who would have to be um, done away with. Mm-hmm. Um, and the KGB said, we have a list of every uh, Freemason in Britain, and they'll be the first people put up against the wall. Well, isn't that interesting? Because what I've heard also is that the, the, the Nazis, uh, one of the first thing that they did when they occupied the land or whatnot, was to get rid and and uh, you know basically burn or whatever they did with a lot of the the, the lodges and a lot of the uh, well they, they banned them basically that's what I've yeah, heard yeah, I, I've heard that funny enough yes yeah that's probably true as well you see with any totalitarian regime they don't like secret organisations with secret organisations they tend to have their own intelligence structures and the Freemasons do now sometimes they were a great asset to the um, uh, the structure of, of British intelligence, and sub, sometimes they were a separate entity. And remember, in something as big as British intelligence, you get you get different families within that, and sure. some would be like left wing, and some would be sort of right wing. And there's often sometimes the rivalry between MI5 and MI6 was greater than that with the Soviets. Hmm. Yeah, the inter rivalry, and and uh, sometimes they. Um, the training methods was, was so different and there'd be uh, rivalry and, um, and a bad feeling between them mm. and, and this, uh, uh, trying to sort of out, outdo each other. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, 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 the Nazis had, had their own versions of their secret societies. So I guess they, they just wanted to replace those with, with another secret society going in, you know, instead. Mm. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, yeah. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. Um, and, and uh, I mean, there again, there are people out there who, who, who say that uh that the agenda of, of the of the new world order itself is masonic that that you know to bring in a, a totally new rule uh on the planet and that there again on the top levels there's a hidden agenda there um and, and through masonry using masonry in in many countries that this is kind of the the way to go uh you know under under government or within government to to you know gain contact and to influence politicians and business yeah. people and things like this too you know there's one word that you mentioned I'd like to pick up on, and that's influence. This is a very powerful word, influence. Now, you mentioned the IRD, the, the Information Research Department. Mm. This was just a propaganda body to influence people. Now, George Orwell was uh, a member of the, the IRD, mm-hmm. um, and, and, and his animal farm, it was a wonderful parody of the way he saw things developing. Now, a lot of people see George Orwell as a prophet. I, I tend to see any sort of totalitarian whatsoever as a bad thing I, I do sure. but there are people who see it as a structure and something to be um, to be looked up to there mm-hmm. are people who who sort of look to the new world order and and say well this will bring in the uh, the uh, um, promised uh, um, aspect in the Bible there um, of a um, heaven on earth sure exactly. because we won't right. have to think um, there'll be no crime there'll be, because it will all be edited out of people yeah. but if you look at people like Rudolf Murdoch um, so they're not um, Rupert Murdoch yeah he um, has influence, that, that word again, because he has a whole group of newspapers who all put forward the same agenda. Mm, yeah. And in psychology, if you, if you keep mentioning the same word, if you keep mentioning the same kind of frame or sentence, it does embed in psychologically into the infrastructure of the psych without you even realizing it. Yeah. Um, and that influence there, um, I, I see it as very sinister. And we're all being influenced. Um, now, the TV is, is the worst thing for it. During the Iraq War and during the Falklands War, we in Britain, before we had the casualties come on, we would have the football results. <laughs> now, I used to think, this this is pathetic. What are they trying to tell us? But football now and football stars, they're put on there like gods. Sure. And we have a recognised psychological um, impairment now. We, we, we Football addiction. Guys are having to go um, to... Um, uh, to therapy classes because of their addiction to football. There are guys there who, these are grown men, they have their football team wallpaper, their football team bed covers, their football team, they actually wear um, shirts like their football, do you see what I mean? 
Sure, absolutely. It is, it is an indoctrination. Of course. And it is that word again, influence. You see, we are not free beings. No, I mean, again, the, the, the football is, is just a kind of a, an, an analogy, I guess, for the bread and circuses of, of you know, the Roman Empire or whatnot, or the yes. gladiator games, or, you know. But, yeah. but because we don't think of that in the historical perspective, we, we, we kind of get blind to that idea. And that I see today football and, and uh, you know, the, the movie, movie stars and the whole celebrity culture as basically just to keep people occupied from... From a lot of the the real you know issues that are going on out there, it's a, it's a, exactly. you know a, a pause game basically. I'm sure you're right. I, I, I agree with you entirely there. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you you mentioned uh, there was an interesting note that you mentioned that that a lot of people that that there actually again is a philosophy that the new world order uh, that is going in is a is a good thing, and I think that a lot of people that are working on that level e- either if they're within industry or influential in other ways or if they're within politics i think that they actually do see that at one point as a kind of solution to a lot of the problems that we have in the world uh, you know a, a society that basically is you know totally surveillanced but they see okay but the 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 good thing about that is that we have we will have you know zero crime you know and the, we we will have a one world Economy, and that means that we don't yeah. have any, you know, devalued, uh, you know, dollars or pounds or, you know, kroner or whatnot. But, um, and, and it's important to kind of just stress that idea that 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 there, that's a, a philosophy, and that people are, you know, inclined to push that bef- be- because of those reasons. But what I see as a kind of a, the, the the counter, um, how should I put it, the the idea that goes goes against that is that I see that a lot of the problems that are created in the world today are, are kind of artificial in themselves. Uh, we are being uh, subjected to a lot of problems that, that necessarily wouldn't have to be there, but because of this philosophy, again, the idea of creating chaos in order to bring in the order. Have you have you heard about that before? Oh, yeah, indeed. Well, we have the situation today in Britain. Every day on British news, we have... Teenagers with guns, guns and knife crime. Now, this hasn't happened overnight. It hasn't happened in a vacuum. We, if you speak to people in the know, they will tell you that guns are coming in from the old Soviet bloc. Mm-hmm. They're coming in through the post. Right? Kids are getting these guns. Now, the, the, the point is this. Is that, um, the authorities know. Okay, but it suits their purposes to have a certain amount of, of crime. And, and kids are sort of getting knives and, and there's been a lot of stabbings. Mm-hmm. But if they do make knife, carrying of knives um, uh, an imprisonable offence, which they say, a lot of these kids, I mean, I could tell you of kids age six that go to Kung Fu. And I mean, they, they could uh, uh, do another kid serious damage, you know, just with their hands and feet. Sure. Your hands and feet are a weapon, you know, but there's no mention of that. You know, um, but the situation has been created by the government so that then they can say, right, well, we need to clamp down now and we're going to be bringing in these ID cards and they're going to cost everyone in the country 1,400 quid. And, yeah. do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, it's that they bring about the situation whereby then they have the excuse to act. Exactly. Well, exactly. That's right. And, and regarding the hands and feet thing, that, that, that this weapon too, that's going to probably get rooted out eventually, at least the plan is there to, uh, if not control people v- via kind of thought crime, uh, people are going to potentially get a, you know, microchip or whatnot, that they're going to be, you know, controlled on some other level, meaning that the, the herd or, or, you know, is going to be called or, or, you know, it's going to be uh, regulated, even even the thoughts and, and the actions of, of each individual. Who knows how long, you know, how, how far this is going to go, you know? In 1965, in Winston Churchill's conservative, um, in his um, uh, in his office, in his constituency office in, in Woodford, there 